Hi, I'm Jimmy Colfax and this is The Story. We're continuing with Eric Scadabo having a chat with Honey Reifler, who's the author of the book Countless, which is a collection of stories reflecting on the numerous miracles of God that have happened at their Sherwood Christian Rehab Centre near Coffs Harbour in New South Wales. Before the break, we heard how Honey met and married her husband, John. Now we're going to hear the miraculous way their drug rehab centre got its start. Then when it was God's time, he through a series of, of Bible verses, God was pointing the direction that now was the time. Uh, we had been over to Coffs Harbour on a holiday, and um, while we were here, we looked around. John looked, went to a real estate agent and said, we want to buy a farm. And the real estate agent said, well, who's the we? And John said, well, God and I. <laughs> and... This real estate agent thought he was a crazy loony you know, <laughs> off the street, but he'd found out John was from Switzerland, his parents were visiting, and the real estate agent said to John, well, how much money, what are you talking about? And he says, oh, money's no object, my father's a millionaire. And of course, he was talking about his heavenly father, <laughs> not his earthly father, but with that, the real estate agent decided to take him a little bit more seriously, listen to the story of the type of property he was after and that we were looking for. And the real estate agent said, well, I was drinking in the pub last night with a bloke. He was a bit under the weather, but he said, um, put my farm on the market. So the real estate agent said, I have a property that might be what you're looking for, Mm -hmm. isolated, no house on it, one entrance, all this. He said, "Uh, but I'm not sure if the fellow really wants to sell, but I'll get in touch in the cold light of dawn and he'd sobered up he said oh all right if you've got a buyer anyhow we came out looked at this property and we both felt this is where god was going to fulfill this vision that we'd had back in 71 but feelings are not enough we wanted a bit more specific than that so we put out a fleece before god in that we asked god to miraculously provide the deposit Mm -hmm. for the farm by the uh, one month that the real estate agent had given us. Mm -hmm. And within that month, exactly that amount of money had come in miraculously. Oh, wow. So on the basis of that, we put our house on the market in Perth and we were able to sell that. We had six months then to come up with the rest of the money. And right to the very last day of that six months, we sold our house and we made the exact amount of profit on the sale of the house to enable us to buy the land, the tractor, and to move us back from Western Australia back to New South Wales. Wow, so it was all happening, confirmation that God was behind what you were doing. Absolutely, and Mm -hmm. that's what we wanted. We wanted that confirmation because here we were going to a very isolated, rugged little bush block, no house, a four-month-old baby, no no nothing, no electricity, no running wow. water, no nothing. Yeah. And we wanted to know, is this where God wants us to be? And that was our confirmation of his miraculous provision of the land. Mm-hmm. So you wanted to start a drug rehab center? Yes. Yeah, so, and I'd ask God, could we have six months to at least put roofs over our heads? Sounds reasonable. And we drove in the gate in an old school bus and another couple had a caravan, and we drove in the gate with our very first alcoholic, and within the first week, we had the first heroin addict there. So the Lord was providing, unfortunately, people who were troubled and addicted. That's right. The last thing we really needed in this very pioneering, rugged situation were people with mammoth, life-threatening problems. But God knew what he was doing. This was our preparation, Mm -hmm. and in it, we were to trust him totally, totally for everything, from Mm. finances to run the place, to wisdom to be able to know what to do, people to help us. Uh, It was to be a faith ministry Mm -hmm. that would be a witness to an unbelieving world Mm -hmm. and a doubting church that God is real and God is able. And within days of being there, John woke up one morning. Hold on a second. Yes. Did you have any place to sleep? We had the old school bus. That was it. And we had two sets of double-decker bunks in that, and we had two blokes on the second set of bunks, and we were on the other set of bunks with the baby, 
and the other couple oh, wow. had uh, a caravan. That was it. We had no flushing toilet. We had just a pan behind a lantana bush. Oh, my goodness. We had goodness. no electricity, apart from what we made with a generator. We had no running water, except for what was in the creek. And we just set forth to, to do all sorts of things. We uh, dug a dam in the creek, and we constructed a ledge on the cliff just behind us, and we carried up a swimming pool, and we pumped water up to the swimming pool, and that uh, then the gravity fed down, and we actually had water come out of a tap. So we had to, to do everything. Very basic. Oh, it was. It was basic, all right, wow. but it was fun. <laughs> and that's how the drug rehab centers started. That's how it began, and it began with these troubled people. Mm-hmm. And then, within days, John had had this vision from God that we were to get railway carriages. And to Just out in. of the blue, he had this Yeah, out vision. of the blue. He woke yeah. up one morning, and he said, I've had this dream. He said, you stay here and pray. I'm going to Grafton to talk to the station master and about buying some railway carriages. So he, I can't say we prayed with very much uh, faith or enthusiasm. We thought he was crazy. <laughs> Anyhow, off he went to Grafton to uh, talk to the station master. And the station master listened and sort of said, I've worked for the railways for 30 years. I've only sold tickets. I don't sell railway carriages. <laughs> and John said, well, this is what God told me. And God doesn't lie. Um, so the station master said, well, look, I'll put you on to Clyde Wagon Works, where they make carriages in Sydney with the railways. Mm-hmm. And um, John got on the phone there, told this fellow his testimony of how he'd come to know Jesus and what Jesus was doing with his drug rehab and the fellow at the other end said stop stop that'll do I've heard enough he said uh, how many carriages do you want wow and John hadn't really thought how many he wanted because you don't normally buy railway carriages <laughs> and he just said oh half a dozen I think he thought he was buying eggs <laughs> but anyhow he said half a dozen and the fellow said right first two will arrive in Glen Ray at the railway station next Saturday and oh they'll cost goodness. you $100 each. $100 each? To pay for the transport. Well, that's next Anyhow, to nothing. We, we, he came back all excited about these carriages, and we were sort of excited, but we thought, well, God, where are we going to get $200 from? That was like $20,000 to us in those days. Yeah. We didn't have the money, so we started praying, mm-hmm. and we prayed and we prayed. We organized for a friend with a semi-trailer and a crane, Uh, We had all that organized to pick up these carriages, Mm -hmm. but we didn't have the money. And we get down there to the railway station thinking, oh, Lord, where's this $200? We've got to pay this up front. And we get there, and our local station master said, he said, look, I can't believe it. He said, these carriages came marked with your name. And he said, I looked inside. There was nothing inside. And John said, no, no, it's nothing inside. We're having the carriages. (laughs) And there was also a note that said, tell that funny pastor in the bush, this is to help the good work get started and free of charge. Oh, my goodness. So we ended up with eight of those goods vans over the next couple of months until finally we also ended up with two passenger wagons. And if you could see the road that comes into Sherwood Cliffs from Glen Ray. It's a dirt road, windy, narrow cuttings, uh, narrow one-lane wooden bridges. Yeah. Absolute miracle that these carriages came in, but God had given them to us, so he must be able to make a way to get them here, and he did. So you went from the bus to eight carriages? To the carriages, yes. We... we decked out uh, the goods vans as bedrooms for the men who were coming into mm-hmm. the program and the ladies and the passenger wagons, uh, we, we used those as bedrooms, kitchens and in between the two big passenger wagons we put a dining room, uh, kitchen and a big lounge room library upstairs. Now, one of the success stories, one of the many success stories was a person who went on to become your son-in-law, is that right? Yes, that's correct. So for us, Uh, Running a drug rehab means that people have to fulfill two criteria to come. Mm -hmm. One is they have to acknowledge that they have a problem. Mm -hmm. And number two, they have to want help for that problem. Mm -hmm. And usually most 
people who who get into the drug scene in Australia start with marijuana. Mm -hmm. Marijuana makes it very difficult to really ascertain where you're at in life. You, mm. you lose your perspective. So therefore, very few uh, addicts come into the program who are addicted to just marijuana. That's usually they've moved on to much heavier substances that have really caused all sorts of major health and legal and family mm -hmm. and mental health problems in their life. Mm -hmm. But in the case of Colin, Colin had grown up in a lovely Christian family. Uh, his grandfather actually had pastored the Coffs Harbour Baptist Church when we arrived here in Coffs. Oh, okay. But um, Colin had chosen to go his own way in life at mm -hmm. a very young age mm -hmm. and had got very seriously into a lot of drug abuse. But miraculously, at 20, Colin discovered through the death of friends who were taking drugs, through the, the grief of his mother, a lot of things brought Colin to his knees. But it was a miracle because it's very unusual for somebody at that age to really ascertain, number one, do they have a problem? Mm -hmm. It's everybody else's problem, not yeah, theirs, yeah. I think. And number two, to want help for that problem. Well, Colin came in at 20. He'd reached the end of his limit. He'd seen friends die. He himself should have been dead, but miraculously God had spared him, and he saw that he had a problem and wanted help. So he came into the program probably 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and um, while he was there, he was all of 20 years of age, um, he met our daughter, who was all of about 17, I think, at that stage, mm -hmm. And, of course, we don't encourage relationships in any shape or form during somebody's uh, life where they're in such a mess. Mm -hmm. But uh, God knew what he was doing, and these two, eventually, God did bring them together. They married, and they actually now run Sherwood Cliffs, and we've retired from the leadership of it. Oh, my goodness. And they've been on staff probably 12 years, I think, now. Yeah. Yes. So he kind of has gone back to his heritage, his Christian heritage. Well, he has, well and truly, yes. And uh, Chantal has grown up in, in a drug rehab, so she's seen it from the other mm -hmm. side. And thankfully, she didn't get into the drugs herself. Mm -hmm. So again, they bring uh, experience as well as the um, academic preparation for this leadership. Okay, and so they didn't go right into that role. They had gone away for a while, is that right? Yes, that's right. They, uh, uh, Colin did a university degree in teaching and uh, Chantal did nursing. So they had a lot of preparation. Mm -hmm. They were very involved with refugees in Coffs Harbour, with the Christian surfers. They went over to Western Australia for a while and then God brought them back here to Coffs Harbour and then he spoke to them both about uh, coming out to work at Sherwood and they thought they were just coming for maybe a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But here they are 12 years later and now running the work. Oh, wow. Yes. So it's kind of come full circle in a it sense. It certainly has. It's wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. And thank you, Eric, for uh, interviewing me. And I just pray that if there's anybody out there who's, who feels hopeless and helpless in this whole drug scene, don't give up. There's a God there who loves you. Just call out to him and he inclines his ear to hear. Amen. That was Eric Scadabo having a chat with Honey Rifler, who was sharing her amazing story. Honey, along with her husband John, are the founders of the Sherwood Christian Rehab Centre near Coffs Harbour in New South Wales. Honey has written a book about the numerous miracles of God they've seen over the years in their centre called Countless. And if you'd like to learn more about their drug rehabilitation centre or the book, you can go to their website, Sherwood Cliffs. Dot com dot au. That's SherwoodCliffs.com.au. And because Honey and John are great storytellers and have countless incredible stories to tell, we've invited John to join us next time to share more about how God has been working in their lives. So you don't want to miss John's side of the story when he joins us next time. Meanwhile, we'll end today with some verses from the Bible that come to mind when reflecting on Honey and John's life journey. They're from Psalm 86. For you, Lord, are great and do marvellous deeds. You alone are God. I will praise you with all of my heart. I will glorify your name forever. Amen. Well, until next time, when we'll hear John Rifler's story, I'm Jimmy Colfax, encouraging you to share your story 
with someone today. Next time on The Story. I couldn't swim properly. I had no idea about an undertow. So I got pulled out and pulled out into cars and the houses on the beach got smaller and smaller. And then a guy came past on a boogie board. So I grabbed his boogie board and, and sort of tried to tell him, take me back. But he, we all both got pulled back outside. So he kicked me in the head. And the last thing I remember was a big foot in my face and I passed out. John Reifler and his wife, Honey, are the founders of the Sherwood Christian Rehab Centre near Coffs Harbour. Last time, Honey shared about the miraculous way their rehab centre got started. And this time, it's John's turn to share his incredible stories. That's all coming up next time. The Story. Just another way vision is connecting faith to life.